Hi, today I want to show you about these 5 tips I'm sure you will love using. Let's start! Rasterizing As we know, Affinity Designer is a vector-based software. We also have some bitmap possibilities, but essentially this is vectors. So imagine we have this graphic like in here, and as you can see, all of these layers are vectors. We can see in here, we have the whole graphic in layers. And we want to, for some reason, whatever the reason you may need, to flatten this graphic, okay? So it's pretty easy. There's just a couple of things you should know. Say you want to rasterize, for example, this um, plant. We right click, we look for rasterize in here and we click it. As you can see, all the nodes disappeared and what we have in here now, it's a pixel layer. So that's as easy as it gets. But there's something I, um, I need to explain. Let's go back, back to transforming in, in, into vectors, what it was before, see now? So basically what I need to explain here is that it, just say you want to uh, flatten the whole building in here, okay? So what would you do? You just drag all over it and you select all the layers. Now you right click and say rasterize. Look what happens. It's only the first layer that is going to get rasterized. The rest of the graphic, the, the rest of the layers are going to be still vectors. So it's important to know that once you have all the layers selected, you need to group them. So command G, group them. We left uh, the background out, but it doesn't really matter for the example. Now we right click, we look for rasterize, we click on it, and now we have the whole graphic transformed into pixels. So we flattened the whole thing by grouping it before. Isolation mode. So this feature comes really handy, especially, but not only, when your graphics start getting a little bit complex. So just say you have lots of layers and you're working and you don't want to get disturbed by all the elements in your artwork. Uh, like for example, I want to work in this red square in here. And what do I do? Well, I click Alt while, while clicking in the element itself, which would be this one. So see what happens. It gets isolated from the rest. So you can work now separately without having all these elements around, which makes it uh, much easier. We make it a little bit bigger. Now we want to get out of this isolation mode. We just have to click on the canvas and you return back to your original view. It's important also to know uh, that um, this uh, feature also works with groups. So for example, we have a group in here and we just do the same. We alt click while clicking also in the layer and it gets isolated. If what you want to do is just select or isolate another element in your artwork, you just have to press alt and click on whatever the layer, the element, you need to isolate. So quite handy and useful. Again, to come back to your original view, click on the canvas and there you go. Color coding layers. This is a really handy feature. I'm gonna show you what it does and I'm gonna tell you what I think about it because I think it should be improved a little bit. Okay, so you see these stack layers in here? If I right click on one of them, I get this menu. There's nothing here telling me I can change the color of this layer in order to highlight it or differentiate it from the rest. But see what happens if I create a new one. Come down here, click on add layer, have this new layer in here. I right click on it. And now we see this menu slightly changed. Now we get this other option called properties. We click on it and we get this dialog. In this dialog, you can change the layer name Let's just name it color. And you can also color code it. You click in here, you select the color you want for it, and you get this little line in here telling you 
This is the color you selected for this layer. If I create a new one, I repeat the action, add layer, right click on it, properties, get the dialog, change the color for it. Let's say this one goes magenta pink. And as you can see in here, I can differentiate layers. There's just one thing I think about this feature that should be improved, a couple of things. One is I find this really subtle. I would like it to be a little bit more prominent, like in Photoshop, something that uh, is a real visual cue. Um, and the second one is I just don't understand why you cannot do the same in former and previous um, layers you created. It should be always there for you to to be able to change the colors and and just give yourself a visual cue that helps you quickly recognize just by color what you have in your layers panel. I think it's uh, something that works really well in other software like in Photoshop, but in this one I still find it a little bit, um, let's say, primitive. Unless I'm wrong, I think this is what you can do with it. Let's just remember when you're creating your new layers, if you want to give them a color, do it at the beginning. Save history. Well, as you can see in here, this is the panel history. You can see all the movements, all the actions I've been using before. This is my history. If you don't have it at hand, as usual, view, studio, click on history and you get this panel. So say, for example, we come back to our graphic and this is the latest history. I got for it and say I close it just normally bye bye you want to save it yes now we close it okay so now we reopen it and my history is blank there's nothing I can do about it like if I want to go back and change something I did before I can't so let's see let's create some action random whatever let's change the color here right uh, pork <laughs> whatever so we have this action here okay now this is where the, the amazing feature begins which is you come here to file and you say instead of save or save us you say save history with document Bank. Now you get this dialogue making you aware that uh, if you save uh, with history, everybody would see, could see uh, how you created it, blah, blah, blah. Just make sure you read it. Say yes. Now you close your document, close it and reopen it. Okay. What do we see? Now it's not blank. It's keeping all your moves. So that means if I go back in the history, I get everything like if I was still working on it in real time. So this means you can save your history and tomorrow you'll be able to come back. Just be aware that if you're using this feature, your document is going to be heavier. But if you really want to save it, you have the possibility. And I think it's uh, really an amazing feature, really useful. Quick opacity setting. Let's go back to our graphic. As you can see, we have selected this element. And as usual, in the layers panel, we see opacity here and we can just slide down and up in order to get the percentage we want. But there is a shortcut for this, which will allow you, allow you to be much quicker. And this goes as it follows. Now we are in a hundred percent. If I now click on my keyboard, the key number two, I'm going to get a 20% of this opacity. In the same way, if I click three, I'm going to get a 30% and so on. If I click four, I'm going to get a four, 40 hundred. Um, I click seven, I get a 70. If I click zero, I'm going to get a hundred percent. 
and back to square one. If I click one, I'm going to get a 10%. So this is a much faster way to get your transparency and help you, especially when you're working, you, if you need to see through your elements, it will help you a lot. I think we saw this in one of my uh, previous tutorials. I will put a card to point out which one, if you want to check it out in action. This is the last tip. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, comment, ask me whatever you want. I'm here to help and see you soon. Bye-bye.